we've reached it. We, we've reached that moment I've seen many shows do before. And that's the moment where they're like, hey, we have only six episodes to tell our story. What are we going to do? Have an entire episode that just feels like filler. <laughs> Why? I mean, it did have that moment where Loki takes a drink and says, another, and smashes the cup on the ground. I was like, hey, that's a great callback. It's a drink, I like it. Another. That's how they get down in Asgard. I like that. Rest of the episode felt a lot like filler because you have Loki and variant Loki. You have the Loki on Loki buddy cop episode and they spend about 40 minutes looking for a cell phone charger. So at the end of the last episode, Loki meets variant Loki. He meets Lady Loki. They go through the quantum leap door. And long story short, in this episode, they end up on this planet where this planet's colliding with this moon, which is weirdly phrased. I feel like the planet would have a stronger gravitational pull than the moon. So technically speaking, the moon's crashing into the planet. But the way they phrase it is the planet's crashing into the moon, fair. But the quantum leap door device is out of juice. So they just, they walk around looking for a way to charge it. But with Loki hanging out with Lady Loki, it's like, all right, ask the questions. Loki should have been like, like right out the gate before we started palling around with her, should have been like, okay, who are you? What's your story? Where are you coming from? What's your end game? Which he asks some of those questions, but you get really vague answers that just frustrated me. I mean, you take the variant thing, you know, there's gonna be overlap with their lives. He was like, oh, I just found out I was adopted not too long ago. She was like, oh, I always knew I was adopted. And he was like, really? Like in terms of her story, this is what you end up knowing by the end of this episode. She was adopted and she knew that. And that's it. I mean, that is so vague. You're dealing with a variant. You want to know what the variant elements are. It's like, oh, are you, were you on Asgard? Variant Odin and variant Rene Russo? Are they your variant parents? Are you a frost giant? Do you know you're a frost giant? Is your biological dad a frost giant king? Like if there's a variant me out there, it's like, where'd you grow up? New York, which is not where I grew up. Who are your parents? Other people who are not your parents. I'm like, okay, so you're not a variant me. You're just another person. I feel like she's just another person. And if you're not gonna give me the details of her variant Loki life, at least give me the details of what's her motivation. What's she going for? What does she have against the team? TVA, how does she see them? Which I feel like is probably tied with who she is and where she comes from. At this point, I'm starting to think she was probably a brainwashed TVA agent who's not actually a Loki variant. She makes this vague reference in passing about Loki working for the fascist organization of the TVA, which is great. I started thinking about that after the last episode that they were actually the bad guys, but I'd like to know a little more about why she feels that way. And this matters on two fronts. One, from the audience's perspective, you wanna know a little more about Lady Loki because the entire episode has you hanging out with her. And if you don't give the audience more about her, then they're hanging out with the character they don't care about, which is how I felt. And with Loki's perspective, I feel like he would pry a little more than he did. I don't think he would roll with the vague answers he got. He's all like, so what are you after? I don't know. Like uh, well, that's good enough for me. Loki's just kind of going into this whole thing blind. Like, yeah, I'll hang out with her and not know jack shit about her. That's fine. Like if it wouldn't be enough for me, I really feel like it wouldn't be enough for the master manipulator that is the God of mischief. There's this connection between Loki and Lady Loki. Like they trust each other. She even says like, do we trust each other? And Loki's like, we do. Loki, God of mischief, zero trust issues. You don't even need trust issues. Just be cautious. There's no reason for you to trust her. I wouldn't trust her. Granted, I wouldn't trust Loki either. That's just called being smart. And I feel like the show with Lady Loki is falling into this trap that Falcon and the Winter Soldier fell into with, what's her name from that organization that I can't remember? Where it's like, oh, here's the villain, but we're gonna make her very sympathetic. But in Falcon and the Winter Soldier, it was like, no, you bombed buildings and killed people. So no. I think you're just a dick. In Loki, there's a possibility that the TVA is a bigger villain than Lady Loki. And the fact that we find out other important information in this episode where she was like, TVA agents, they were just people, you know? Like some of them were on, I mean, I'm sure they're from a lot of other worlds, like Asgard and other worlds where people look like humans from Earth. But we find out they don't know that. These TVA agents don't know where they come from. They think they were created by these time lords and they weren't it's all a lie which again that's cool that's actually compelling lady loki's gonna burn a system to the ground that's great and the way she says it implies that she empathizes with that she's like they don't know that it's like oh yeah they're victims you get it as i burn them alive like i'm a monster in a horror movie so i mean does she really get it this 
there's conflict among the writing, and they've done this before, and I, I see this. This is a repeating pattern. <laughs> I feel like the time in an MCU series they had a sympathetic villain was when they had one by accident, when it was Wanda. Because I don't think they actually knew that Wanda was the villain when they made the show, but logistically, she was. And when they try to do it on purpose, you see conflicting concepts in the writing. You even see that with Loki a bit. You know, this whole world's gonna die. Like everyone on this planet is going to die and they have to get to this ship that's gonna get off the planet. And he says something like, all these people are gonna die. Which I do think Loki would think about about the time of Avengers Endgame, maybe. But this Loki just got done sacking New York. What does he give a fuck? Look to your elder people. Let him be an example. I get that he saw a film reel of his entire life and destiny and death and that probably changes a bit of his perspective, but that's not the same as years of experience that will lead you to that sense of moral enlightenment. A couple thoughts I do have is Lady Loki says with the strong minds, you know, the strong minded people, you have to play the long game and create a whole fantasy reality based off of their mind, which makes me think at the end of this show, maybe the second to last episode, uh, we're gonna find out that Loki was inside his head. This episode and the next two were just gonna be a fantasy lie in which he's trying to hack his brain. And this episode also showed me how much Owen Wilson adds to the intrigue of the show because he is, he's apparently a big part of it. He's a big part of the draw. He and Loki are what I like about the show. Not Loki and other Loki, I, I just don't care. Regardless, Loki, Lady Loki, and or both, I feel like they're going to succeed at the end of this and trashing this universal timeline that's supposed to be the one timeline. Because it sounds like if they do succeed, there's gonna be some sort of multiverse of madness which is apparently actually going to happen. So regardless, one thing remains, we are all in a reality where apparently that Adam Warlock post credit scene doesn't mean jack shit. Is it ever gonna matter? <laughs> Did that happen? And in the end, this was a really frustrating episode from the fact that we only have six episodes of the show and this was a filler episode when we don't have time for filler episodes. The fact that Loki is not really acting like Loki as he should be acting in this phase of his life. The fact that the episode had us palling around with Lady Loki and gave us no reason to want to do that. I was optimistic about the show. The show had an early hook that really grabbed me. This episode makes me cautious going forward. All right, so episode three of Loki, what did you think about it? Did it feel like filler? Did you get the answers you wanted? Do you think there's a bigger thing happening? Do you think she's actually a very Loki? Because I don't. <laughs> Not at this point. Now, whatever you thought, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more.